Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Today, I want to talk about Hilbert Syzygy's theorem, which is the first theorem in homological algebra and a landmark theorem in this theory. And it's one of the first results that uh, Hilbert actually came up with. This uh, theorem greatly extends our understanding of the polynomial ring and modules over it. Okay, so let's see what our setup is. Okay, we're going to start with our polynomial ring um, over the field K with variables X1 up to XD. Okay, so this is a graded K algebra. So remember what that means. So uh, the grading gives you a direct sum decomposition of this uh, polynomial ring like this. It's the direct sum of these RIs. And to be graded means that when you multiply RI by RJ, so these I and J, by the way, these are non-negative integers. When you multiply RI times RJ, that is contained inside RI plus J. And in this case, the natural grading to associate to this polynomial ring here is just by degree. So RI is just the span of all the monomials of degree I. Okay, so that's the ring that we want to have a look at. And what we want to study are graded R modules. Okay, so what does it mean to be a graded R module, remember? So that's just an R module where there's also a direct sum decomposition of that module M. So it's a direct sum of MI, and now these indices I range over all the integers. And the graded bit just means that it respects this direct sum decomposition in these two cases in the sense that if you do the multiplication mi times rj, all those products have to lie inside mi plus j. And the natural question is, well, how do you study this module m? Okay, so there are lots and lots of different ways of doing that, but I want to show you just a general procedure for doing it and also how Hilbert Syzygy's theorem comes into play. Okay, so let's suppose that at least we understand this ring itself as a module over itself, okay? So that's what we're going to start as our starting assumption. And uh, one way that do, we do understand this uh, ring itself is, for example, if you want to talk about its size, remember one way to do that is via its Hilbert series. And we've seen how to look at its Hilbert series in a previous video. The Hilbert series here, it's a function of t, and it's just 1 on 1 minus t to the power of d. Okay, so this gives you the dimension of all these graded pieces okay so that's something that's immediately some useful information okay which tells you about this module okay so if you know this one well then you know about lots of other graded modules too okay so what else do we know so another thing you can do in graded module theory is you can shift this module or any other module for that matter okay so what we're going to do here is we're going to look at the shift of r Rn, so n here is just an integer. So as an R module, it's just going to be the same as R. But what we're going to do is we're going to change this. So we're going to look at it as a module now, and we're going to change the grading on it. Okay, so how is the change the grading going to change? So if I look at the degree i component of this Rn, this is not going to be Ri, which is the ith degree component of this R module R, but it's going to be Ri plus n. Okay, and it's not difficult to see that this is still a graded R module, but it's actually a different one from this one here, because if you look at the graded components, they're quite different. Okay, The i-th component of this is not the i-th component of this one here, so they're quite different. Okay, Something else that you would have seen, in fact, this tells you uh, in other ways how it's different, is the Hilbert series is quite different as well. So if you have a look at the Hilbert series of this shifted one, of course you just shift all the dimensions of these um, graded pieces, okay, since you just shifted the index here by some constant, and that corresponds to multiplying by t to the minus n, the Hilbert series here, okay? So they're related, but they're not the same, they're quite, quite different. But one thing it means is that, well, if you understand r, then of course it's quite easy to understand this, and as an example, well, the Hilbert series is easy to compute here. Okay, so suppose we understand these modules. Well, once you understand these ones, of course, taking direct sum is a simple procedure. And so if you take the strict sums of modules of this form, you understand that as well. Okay, and these modules are called graded free modules. So if you have a direct sum of shifts of R, okay, that's a graded free module. And in what sense do we understand that? Well, we understand in many ways. But for example, if you want to compute its Hilbert series here, Okay, the Hilbert series of a direct sum is just the sum of the Hilbert series of the individual uh, components. So, of course, in this case, you know the Hilbert series of all of these via this formula here. And so you know the Hilbert series of this one here, too. Okay, so let's see how uh, I'm going to give you one type of answer to this question here. How do you study this M here? Well, I guess the key way is you try to compare this module that you may not know much about with a module that you do know 
fair bit about. And the modules that we're saying we do know a fair bit about is are these graded free modules, okay? For example, we know it's Hilbert series. Okay, so how can we compare with such a graded free module in such a way that we can extract information about that module M, okay? So I guess what we'll do is we're going to construct a surjective map from such a graded free module to that M. And let me show you how you do that. What we're going to do is we're going to pick some homogeneous generators for this M. Okay, so that means they're generators for the R module, but they have to be homogeneous in the sense that they sit in one degree component. So they sit in... Um, these uh, components here. Okay, So suppose mi is a generator and it sits in degree ni of this module m. Okay, And we'll let this i range over well, however many generators you need. Okay, So what we can do now is we can form the graded free module. Okay, It's going to have as many uh, components as there are generators. Okay, And what we're going to do is we're going to need to have some shifts of this R, and we shift by minus Ni, where Ni are the degrees of these homogeneous generators. Okay? And I claim now we have a subjective map from this graded free module here to this module M. And how do we get that? Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at an element of this, okay, which is some, um, R, uh, some tuple here, okay? of uh, elements inside here. So remember, this is just a copy of the ring, so I've denoted it with R, okay? So there's R i's here. And then since you have that, what you can do is you can send this to the sum of M i times R i. Okay, so this is a module. Okay, so you can scale and multiply these generators and by these uh, scalars inside R, okay? And sum them up and that give you an element uh, Okay, and remember in the direct sum here, almost all of these are going to be zero. Okay, so only a finite number of non-zero, so this sum is actually just a finite sum. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay, so what does it mean that these MIs are generators for this module M? That means that every element here can be written as a R linear combination of these MIs. Okay, so since the uh, image of this map is a set of R linear combinations of these MIs, of course this is a subjective map. And it's quite easy actually to check that this is an R module homomorphism. And the reason why we needed these shifts in the grade is to make sure that it's a graded homomorphism. Okay, so it's degree zero. So it sends the degree J component here to the degree J component here. Okay, so it's a graded homomorphism of R modules. Okay, so that's great. Okay, you have a subjective homomorphism which allows you to compare this module here with this graded free module that we understand more about. Okay, and the great thing now is that when you're in this situation, of course, you can apply the first isomorphism theorem for modules. And what does that tell us? That tells us what this M is using this uh, here. Okay, so M is just isomorphic to well, the domain of this, which is this graded free module that we kind of understand. We know it's Hilbert series modulo the kernel of this map, the kernel of phi, okay? So what's happened here is that to understand this M, we can write it as a quotient of this graded free we know, okay? And we've basically swapped our understanding of this, or trying to understand this, to trying to understand this sub-module of this graded free uh, module here. So that's the kernel of phi, okay? So what is this sub-module, okay? So maybe that we know all about this, and then if we know all about the sub-module of this graded free module, we basically understand that M, as long as we understand the quotient construction. Okay? But of course, it's, there's no guarantee from what we've done so far that we understand the kernel of phi. Okay, so what, for example, can you uh, say if you know about the kernel of phi? Okay, so suppose, for example, you're interested in finding out what's the Hilbert series of this graded module M here. Okay? Can you work it out? Well, this is a quotient. So since it's a quotient, the Hilbert series of a quotient is just a Hilbert series of what's here, which is a graded free, so it's a direct sum of the formulas that I've given here. So it's the sum of t to the ni on 1 minus t to the d. That's the Hilbert uh, series of this here, minus this Hilbert series of this kernel of phi. Okay? So once you know this, uh, if you know this module and its Hilbert series, then you know the Hilbert series of m as well. Okay, so it turns out that you swapped the understanding of M with this understanding of kernel phi, and so we're going to give this kernel of phi a name. Okay, we call kernel phi a first syzygy of M. Okay, and we denote it by omega one of M. Okay, the one for first syzygy. Okay, and uh, the 
thing to note here is that we call it A first CCG as opposed to V first CCG because there's actually choice as to what it is. So how do we form this? We form this by picking a set of generators, homogeneous, homogeneous set of generators for M. And of course, there's lots and lots of different sets of homogeneous generators for M. So each of them will produce a surjective graded homomorphism from a graded free ring, I mean graded free module, to that M. And that graded free module can change quite a bit, and hence also the kernel. Now, if the first syzygy omega 1M is, happens to be graded free, then supposedly you understand what it is, and hence now you understand the original module M. So the natural question is, of course, well, what happens if this omega 1m is not graded free? What should you do? Well, of course, you can just repeat the procedure that we used before. And what does that do? Okay, what it does is that this omega 1m, you can now write as a quotient of a graded free module. So you can write it as the direct sum of R minus Li, okay, some graded free module like that, quotient out by whatever the kernel of that surjective map we've constructed is, um, found by taking homogeneous generators of this first syzygy. And that kernel we'll call omega 2m the second syzygy of uh, m. Okay, the second syzygy of m is denoted omega 2m. If in this case this omega 2m now is graded free, then of course, presumably you can reconstruct the first syzygy and hence m itself. But of course, uh, if this you can't, it doesn't turn out to be graded free, you can repeat as needed to get the third, fourth, and so forth syzygy. And what's the wonderful theorem about Hilbert is that actually this process terminates in a certain sense, okay? If M is finitely, G, finitely generated, then if you look at the diff syzygy, okay, this is actually graded free, okay? So at some point, in fact, you can say what this is. This D, remember, is the number of variables of this polynomial ring, okay? That, uh, this D syzygy is going to be graded free. And this is an actual way that you can use to actually understand this module now. Okay? So for example, how much you want to use it. So remember, uh, if you have this information here, okay, that allows you to relate the Hilbert series of one of these syzygies to one of the, the next syzygy along, okay, in terms of this, uh, the Hilbert series of this graded free. Now, you can compute the Hilbert series of these graded frees, okay? So, using this inductively, you can work out what the Hilbert series of M is, okay? If you have all this information here. And what does it tell us, okay? So, one thing that you can draw theoretically from all this is that the Hilbert series of M, so basically it has to look a lot like the Hilbert series of this, okay? And what we saw there was we had um, a polynomial, uh, Hilbert series of this form, it's a P of t over 1 minus t to the d, and this P of t is going to be a Laurent polynomial. So I guess there should be a plus or minus 1 here. A Laurent polynomial. Uh, uh, P of t divided by 1 minus t to the d. Okay, so that's rather nice. So the number of Hilbert series that you can get, it doesn't go crazy. It's always this... Um, or a, a rational function, okay? It's always this rational function here. And so it's limited what it can be, okay? And one of the things that you can do, for example, is you can look and see how fast the coefficients grow. And that will give you a size on this graded module. And in fact, that leads to dimension theory for uh, modules, graded modules over the polynomial ring, and hence more generally, graded modules over a finitely generated commutative algebra, okay? So another way of looking at that is that you can look at what is the pole at t equals one. So there's a pole of order d here, okay? And depending on the order of that pole, that kind of tells you how uh, big this module is. So there's a lot of information that you can draw from this Hilbert series, and the fact that it is very nice that it is a rational function, okay, really helps you understand the theory of these uh, modules of the polynomial ring. Okay, so let me just make some concluding remarks. So first, uh, these uh, I syzygies, they're not unique. Just as the first one is not unique, once the first one is not unique, okay, the next one, of course, there's even more choices as to what can happen and so forth down the line. And 
in many ways, these syzygies, they tell you about the module. Okay? There's some things that you can attach to a module that tell you about it. But it's very similar to if you're trying to triangulate a surface. Okay? When you try to triangulate a surface, there are lots of different ways that you can triangulate it. Here, when you try to write all these representations, there are lots of different ways that you can um, write it. But the key information that you want to get out of the day should always be the same. So it doesn't matter how you set this up to get the different uh, syzygies. Okay, if you try to compute the uh, Hilbert series using the method I told you, you'll always get the same answer. Okay, so that's just a feature, a very important and interesting feature about homological algebra. Often we have some object we want to study. Okay, we try to represent it in a certain way to understand it. But there are lots of different ways that we can represent it. But they all, at the end of the day, give you similar sorts of results. Okay. So that's the first thing, okay? So then the other thing is that, yeah, how do we actually reconstruct this M from all these syzygies, okay? So the way we reconstruct this M is, of course, we need to use this isomorphism here, right, for each I. The i syzygy is some greater free modulo the I plus first syzygy here, right? And so there's quite a lot of data in these isomorphisms. And one of the things that we need is we need a better language to, uh, to encapsulate all this information. And what we'll see in a later video is that we can splice all these isomorphisms together in what is called a free resolution for M. And that is going to be the way that we're going to represent and study a graded module M. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.